Hi, my name is Kelvin. I'm the head of distribution at Aislango. Aislango is in charge of the water treatment as well as distribution of water to all uh, consumers in Selangor, KL and Putrajaya. We serve a population of 8.4 million people and daily we provide about 5,000 million litres per day of water supply. In 2008, the state water service industry was restructured to consolidate our water supply operators from five separate bodies into one. Only in 2019 did Aislango officially begin its journey as the sole entity licensed to treat and distribute the water supply in Selangor, Kuala Lumpur and Putrajaya. Currently, Aislango oversees operations in 34 water treatment plants and 1,610 service reservoirs. Powered by a workforce of over 5,000 people, Aislango supplies about 5,000 million litres of water per day to Selangor, Kuala Lumpur and Putrajaya. But even with all these assets and responsibilities that Aislang holds, it still needs a comprehensive network of management bodies, lawmakers and industry leaders to work together to provide water for us. In this episode, we meet up with Mr. Kelvin, the Head of Distributions at Aislango, as he explains the ecosystem of our water management system. Over the last two to three decades, the most important change will be the entire treatment as well as distribution of water supply is under one organisation, namely AIS Lango. Here, what is important is we cover the entire spectrum from treatment to distribution. Unlike previously, where the treatment and distribution are segregated. So when you have an organisation that cover the entire spectrum, there are a lot that we can improve. The most pertinent challenges will be communication between all parties, we want to ensure continuous water supply to our customers. Hence, information is key. There are a lot of parties involved in the management of water supply. We have the Ministry of Environment and Water. They mainly look into the water resources to ensure sufficient water for all. Ministry of Health is in charge of the water quality parameters. Span, they regulate supervise and monitor all the water operators in Malaysia. We also have PAAP, the water asset owner, LUAS, Lembaga Urus Air Selangor, from the state government. They provide licensing uh, with regards to activities nearby the water resources. Even Polis Diraja Malaysia, if there are incidences or cases of pollution, we will need their assistance to take the relevant action. Despite the cooperation of these various parties, over the past years, many residents of the Klang Valley have had to go through disruptions in their water supply. When we experience water disruptions, it usually means two things. One is the scheduled water disruptions, which mainly involve the upgrading of pipes, and in these instances, the consumers in the affected areas are given a notice in advance. The second would be unscheduled water disruptions, where consumers are left without water supply and without prior notice. Many of these incidents are caused by raw water pollution. Most times, these disruptions would affect more than half of Selangor and Kuala Lumpur due to the strict health and safety standards in place. In 2020, there were a few incidents that we detect odour in our raw water. Odour is considered as unobjectionable smell, which we take the precaution to stop the operation of our water treatment plants to avoid the contaminants. This means there is some substance inside the water and we do know what is that. There are illegal thumping at the water catchment. There are river civilian teams from Ayah Selengor which we name it as Team Paka. They will search for the source of pollution together with the authorities. Once the odor is detected in our raw water, especially at the intake of water treatment plants, we have to straight away stop the operation. So we have try to minimize the risk that our consumer might face. 60% of the population in Selangor, KL and Putrajaya, its water supply comes from Sungai Selangor. We have four treatment plants, uh, Sungai Selangor Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3, as well as Rantau Panjang. Hence, if you have a reading of one, we will have no choice but to shut down all four plants and hence it will affect 60% of the population. Once the pollution subsided and the reading goes to zero for three consecutive readings, the plant will start to operate again. That's the SOP that we have with regards to pollution. From the previous incidences that have happened, we found that the pollutions come from the industrial sector, 
What is important here, we would like to highlight that all these industrial sectors will need to comply and be responsible to manage their waste properly in accordance to the law, particularly under the Department of Environment. Hence, they will have to review and recommend so that these laws are passed in the parliament. Incidents of illegal dumping and pollution can be hard to predict and efforts to curtail these crimes involve stringent planning and commitment from all parties involved, from lawmakers and regulators to industry leaders and the general public. The fight against environmental pollution will be a long one, but Aislangu has embarked on a project that could help ensure a continuous supply of clean water in the face of these pollution incidents. Currently, the treated water reserve margin stands at 11% for Aislangu, and with an increase in reserve margin, it will better safeguard the continuous water supply to the customers. For example, if Sungai Selangor Water Treatment Plant is affected and we have a high reserve margin, we are then able to channel another water supply from a different source to the customers. Hence, the customers will not feel there is a water disruption, even though one of the treatment plants has been shut down. That is the significance of a higher treated water reserve margin. We have now embarked on a new water treatment plant, Rasal Water Treatment Plant. Upon completion, and uh, once the treatment plant is running, we would have reduced that over-reliance from 60% to 46% of the population in Selangor and Ukiah. Rasal Water Treatment Plant will be getting its raw water from Sungai Klang. It will be able to supply both Klang and Pataling.